Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, salam, namaste, sasvikal, vanakam, kimcho, and a very good morning to all our distinguished panelists and participants who are watching us from all across India and abroad. We welcome you all to India's largest employment talk series presented by Data Train DD Talks. Well, we're proud to say that Data Trained is amongst India's top 10 professional institutes for data science and number one in North India. We're proud to say that we nurture 2000 plus students, professionals every year with our alumni working in Adobe, HCL, IBM, RBS, Flipkart, just to name a few. Data Train aims at providing access to quality learning in emerging technologies that has always been a challenge to most of the demographics of the Indian subcontinent. It's a beautiful Sunday morning and we're truly blessed and humbled to have all of you here with us when we are all set to talk about mastering self-leadership, where I assure you this is gonna be a session extremely high on energy and as interactive as possible. So all those of you who are watching us live on YouTube, do not forget to push the like button so that we can know you are excited. And trust me, we are equally excited for today's session. And once again, let me welcome each one of you to this beautiful, wonderful day where I have been joined by my fellow speakers and our lovely audience for this session. And uh, for this session, I will be the host, I will be the moderator, MC Dharna. So let's get started as I now introduce you to my fellow panelists who've taken out time from their busy schedules and they've joined us here today. So I would first like to welcome Mr. Saksham Agrawal, founder and CEO of Acropolis. Saksham is the founder and CEO of Acropolis, Infotech Private Limited, and award-winning custom app software development company headquartered in New Delhi, India, and catering business from different industry verticals from all across the globe with tailored IT solutions. Saksham holds a collective experience of around a decade into the IT industry and has been leading Acropolis since its inception in 2016. He's a multifaceted, efficient, reliable, dynamic personality who utilizes creativity, leadership, and teamwork to design and execute solutions that create customer value and offers great return on investment. Saksham, we're so proud uh, and happy to have you here today. Thank you so much for having me here, MP. So moving on up next in the panel, I have Mr. Sukhvinder Singh, Senior Manager at Tan and Bradstreet. He is an experienced sales and marketing professional with eight plus years of experience in B2B sales, marketing, and demand generation roles. Sukhvinder is alumnus of Indian Institute of Foreign Trade and has done his BTEC from GNE Ludhiana. Sukhvinder, it is such a delight to have you here today. Thank you, Lana. Thank you so much. Up next in the panel, I have yet another multifaceted personality, one name that needs no introduction at all, Ms. Chandra Jain, campus recruitment, branding, training and placement at IDS Mohan Nagar is what she's taking care of. She's an MBA with a strong passion for technology and serving nation with 20 plus years of experience, passion for evaluating client requirements and delivering strategic solutions to campus placement training branding, HR development, corporate lesioning, and equipping and adapting the technology solutions to enhance the teaching learning process. Working with National Committee of MOOCS and taking workshops across India on OER, Moodle, use of ICT in higher education, advanced teaching periodology, career counseling and personality guidance for students develop psychometric assessment for various phases of student life. She has authored a series of 15 books on mind map solutions, all 29 books of NCRT in science, social studies and maths have been developed in mind maps with advanced technology pedology. So uh, Chanda, it is such an honor to have you here at today's show. 
Thank you so much, everyone, and thank you, MC, for such a wonderful introduction. I'm really humbled to be there, and I uh, means uh, I greet my fellow uh, panelists also. Uh, it's so nice to see you all here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Chanda. And last but not the least, to complete our panel today, we have Mr. Kapil Bharadwaj, AVP Sales from Data Trained. He's a seasoned professional with cumulative experience of 12 plus years and demonstrated ability in building and leading large teams, ensuring customer experience, effective sales operations, and transforming the team into a strategic business unit. So Kapil, it is a pleasure having you here at this chapter of Daily Talks today. Kapil, you're on mute. I'm sorry, uh, Dana, thank you very much for uh, having me here and um, good morning to all of you as well. And it's always uh, nice to uh, be working with you, Dana. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kapil. And once again, a very warm welcome to all of you who've joined us here and to all our audience members who are watching us live. So uh, once again, I'd like to tell all of you the, that we are streaming live and exclusive on YouTube's Data, Tra uh, Data Train's YouTube platform. So keep posting your comments and questions in the chat box and I'll read them out here. Put forward your questions, so let's get started. Well, self-leadership is the answer to how do we develop ourselves to survive and thrive in a volatile and complex and ambiguous world. Self-leadership is the critical success factor for individuals and organizational success. So let's start today's discussion by taking opening comments on this topic, mastering self-leadership. And let's start with Saksham on this. Sure thing, uh, MC. So, uh, well, my take on uh, building self mastership is like uh, everything like uh, uh, if you talk about uh, friction if you talk about confusions if you talk about uh, un underperformance or low performance this all comes to us naturally we do not have to work for that but when it comes to um, uphill like there are two uh, ways in life uphill and downhill talking about uphill everything that we need to go uphill requires self uh, motivation self leadership self confidence and, and to build it up uh, uh, there are multiple things like uh, the first one is confidence if you are not confident about what you are doing or who you are or what you want in your life i'm not sure uh, uh, self leadership is something that you will be achieving in in the short uh, say uh, tenure uh, next is self leadership is not one time goal or not something that uh, that is a time bound task it is an ongoing process that goes throughout the life so we have to continuously work on it for example uh, there is a japanese uh, word called kaizen Kaizen means that there has to be continuous improvement, whatever you have been doing. It's not about uh, if someone is claiming or if someone is, uh, if someone has been told that, okay, you are a leader, that doesn't mean that uh, he's above others. It's just that he's more consistent with his work. He's more uh, consistent with the, whatever he has been doing and he has been doing it repeatedly for over the time. That's all. So very well said by Saksham that it is not a destination, it's a journey. It's an ongoing process that keeps evolving with each passing day. Uh, let's move on to Sukhvinder. Sukhvinder, your opening comments on this. Thanks, Nahan. I think Saksham has summarized it really very well, how you can define a leadership. So uh, I am keen, very fond of reading books. And uh, once I came across a book by Mr. Prakash here. So Prakash is a person I really uh, follow him a lot. He's a very successful corporate leader from PepsiCo, then he's a, a speaker also right now. So in one of his book uh, on uh, the leadership, he mentioned about how we can uh, draw an analogy between a leadership and a tea bag. That's a very interesting thing and I would like to share it here. So what he mentioned was that uh, a, a leader can draw a lot of lesson, uh, lesson from a tea bag. The very first one is, it's not about the cover, but it's about what's inside. So like uh, you may have a very fancy tea bag, a uh, wonderful packing. But unless it doesn't taste good, you won't like it. The same is with a leader. So you might have a fancy degree. Uh, you might have gone to a, a great college. You have a great uh, title within your organization. 
but unless if you are the person uh, you are not a good human being you are not a person who can empathize with other a person who can't uh, uh, put himself in the situation of other he can't be a great leader uh, the second thing he uh, mentioned was that uh, a real flavor of a tea bag comes only when it is uh, dipped in a hot water so maybe if you put a tea bag in a lukewarm water you never get a pure flavor of it the same thing is with the leader also so unless you are not tested to your uh, core strength you are not put outside your comfort zone you are not put outside your boundary you won't be able to test it to character of a leader uh, the third thing is uh, you need to be porous as a tea bag so unless uh, a tea bag is not porous its flavor will not go out in a water a uh, same thing is with the leader uh, unless you are working uh, in a very silos you put a boundary around you you are not interacting with the people around you so you can't be a great leader in that case you can't exchange ideas you can't learn from the people around you so you need to be very porous uh, you need to be open to share ideas you need to be open to learn from others uh, the next thing he mentioned was uh, it really doesn't matter uh, where the tea bag is in the cup uh, so it may be in the top of it it may be in the bottom it may be on the side uh, it will definitely give its flavor to the tea but the same thing is with the leader it doesn't matter where you are in the organization may not be an organization may be in your college may be with your family it really doesn't matter what role you are playing but if you are actually one who can contribute who can inspire other unless that you are not a uh, true leader and the last thing which he mentioned and i think that's very really interesting is it's always someone else who is holding your string right so maybe it's in family it's your father or maybe it's your wife or in a organization it's your manager or for a ceo it's a stakeholder or a shareholder so it's always someone else who is holding your string so always have that humility in you never think that i have arrived in my life i have achieved everything i have been a great leader so it's always someone else who is holding a string for you uh, so maybe next time when you are uh, sipping in a tea so you can learn a great leadership lesson from a tea bag also yeah right way right he said by sukhvinder next time when you are sipping a cup of tea you can uh, recall all these things that he's mentioned right now and i i rightly uh, agree to what you said sukhvinder uh, the leader has to be really empathetic be a good human being a lot and a lot more things so having a fancy degree doesn't just do the job so uh, let's move on to chanda chanda your opening comments uh, uh, hello everyone uh, i was listening to my fellow uh, panelists saksham and sukhanta they have very well said about leadership somehow uh, i am a very you know fond of storytelling so i'll start with a story a young boy uh, very young boy he was passing from the woods and uh, uh, there was a cross road so he was a little lost and he start wondering that uh, which road should i take then he saw an old gentleman there sitting and he thought that this uh, person might be knowing where the road leads to and then he went to this person and he asked this uh, old gentleman that sir uh, which road should i take then the old gentleman asked him a question son where do you want to go then the boy answered i don't know then the gentleman answered that if you don't know about your destination then no matter which road you take it will take you somewhere so my opening statement about is that everybody every one of us is born genius but however most of us uh, fail to realize the true potential of our being uh, and that's how we you know we pass uh, our life like average or uh, living for some other standards other standards which others have set how many times we think to take the reins of our life in our own hands and to be the master of our own destiny so most of the time what happens as sukhvinder correctly said that we look upon others to guide to motivate us uh, motivate us to counsel us to find the path of the life because our social system is also designed in such a way so from my point of view self leadership starts when you decide that yes my life is my own no apologies no excuses no one to lean on or rely on or blame life is a gift and uh, as saksham was saying that is an amazing journey so but you alone are the responsible for the quality so actually self leadership starts when you take this responsibility that my life is my own and the outcome the productivity the quality of life whatever i will be having will be the outcome of the choices which i make and uh, i believe that self leadership starts when we start being courageous when we start identifying ourselves 
and uh, when we start identifying ourselves a uh, very japanese term a very famous japanese term all of you must have heard and there was a book also recently very famous it got ikigai when we start identifying our own ikigai then i believe self leadership starts because then you will be able to motivate yourself people around you because only a person who is happy with himself or herself and knows understands own true potential then only you can help others to realize their own potential so in my take self uh, leadership starts with identifying yourself having the courage to take your life in your hands and to take the responsibility of the choices which you are going to make for yourself we should not have this kind of courage that no i'm not going to blame for anybody nobody no matter who is taking decision i will listen to everybody i'll have my own take and i'll take my own decisions this is my journey and i am alone who is responsible for whatever will be the outcome of this so self leadership will start when we start understanding our life when we start taking the responsibility of our life and as sukhinder was saying that no matter where you are if you are a leader if you have taken the responsibility then you will lead undoubtedly no matter where you are you may be a manager or you may be on a very junior position that will not make much of the difference uh, this is what uh, i would say in my opening comment for self leadership right so again very very rightly said by you chanda uh, our life is a sum of our choices and everything we desire is on the other side of the fear so uh, moving on to kapil kapil your opening comments on this yeah hi uh, hi all uh, see you know um, i'll being from the sales background and uh, leading you know small and large teams so my take is somewhat uh, business driven on on being a a self leader or a self leadership i talk about so uh, but what i would like to say here is that you know it, it is first of all the main important thing to become a a leader in yourself is to bring in- integrity in your actions right so because uh, when let's say like you are just starting off your career and you are just stepping up the stones and uh, you know handling our larger teams gradually but then once you are reaching a level where a lot of lives as in like livelihood of a lot of people and your uh, you know pnl of your company depends upon your uh, uh, minor uh, decision so you have to be very you know uh, honest and uh, you have to be uh, uh, being like self disciplined so you, you are you know you should take responsible responsibility of your actions first so that yes you know whatever you are doing so it's not just for you it's there'll be you know a lot of people maybe one or maybe 100 or 500 people who will be affected by your single decision so once you are leading your life once you are a leader of yourself and your decisions then yes definitely you know you can uh, direct the whole herd behind you so it's like you know one should have a, a personalized set of ethics and principles on which you drive your life because the steering of your life is in your own own hands right so gradually yes you know you set to work in uh, different organizations and different kind of domains and um, what i have seen in and you know, i could be wrong here but then in india uh the careers are not by choice mostly but they are by chance right so people end up you know uh, learning or you know educating themselves in x subject and then they all of their life they are working on a y domain right so it, it's it's not something being a leader you cannot be you know taught by the books or you cannot learn it just by reading a book or so but then yes like it's your experiences and it's your observations throughout your life uh, which uh, teaches you so um, in the end i would like to say that you know as a as a leader first you should you know be uh, very honest to yourself and your actions and then define a path of success so that your people like who are your downline can see and you know seek that uh, you know uh, kind of a success path from you and as a leader what i believe uh, and especially uh, when it comes to you know handling the sales which is like the uh fuel which is adding fuel to the company that as a leader your error percentage should be way way less than your team always and that can only happen when you are you know self disciplined and you are a leader in yourself of your own so yeah that's it thank you yes yeah, so uh with opening comments from all of you i can completely understand that this is going to be a very high energy session 
so let's move on to the next question that I or the next point that I'd like the panel to touch upon. Uh, how to build self leadership? So uh, again, let's stop with Saksham on this. Yes, thank you. So, well, uh, to build up uh, self leadership, we need to understand, uh, as I as I previously said, that we need to understand who we are and where we want to go. Now, uh, uh, Kapil told uh, told us about sales. He to, uh, touched the point about sales, and sales is something that is very close to uh close to me in terms of as a subject i have been closely leading the team at acropolis as well into sales uh, i recall one of the uh, incidents that recently happened a conversation that recently happened with one of my colleagues who recently joined acropolis under sales department and uh, he's very enthusiastic he's very uh, cheerful and uh, uh, after like training session, after having a training session of one month or so, uh, he was so pumped up that, okay, I'll be bringing up this much of revenue. I'll be bringing up this much of sales within this much of time. And the time and the revenue was all good. The numbers were all good, but it was not realistic. I, I felt that it is not realistic. So uh, I gave him an analogy that I want to share right away. Uh, let's say I need to go from Delhi to Jaipur by a car. So I would be taking somewhere at least six hours. Uh, when I claim to someone that I'll be going to Delhi to Jaipur uh, within six hours, the other person can counter back my comment and uh, say that, okay, I, I can drive fast and I can go there by uh, within like three hours or four hours. The point is, uh, when we are new to self-leadership, we are very much pumped up, but we do not understand that there are multiple barriers or multiple uh, roadblocks that that are uh, not calculated uh, beforehand. For example, when we are going, maybe I'll be finding a, a traffic jam around Manesa for two hours. Maybe I'll be clearing that jam and then I'll be uh, facing tire bursts for my uh, for my car. So these are the things that needs to be calculated. And the point that I'm trying to make is self-leadership is not only about being pumped up, but also about uh, uh, the practicality, how practical you can be, how practical your approach is, and how, um, how, in how easygoing manner you are uh, thinking about the things. It's also about thinking uh, with this, uh, different people's perspective. It's not about manipulating your uh, things as per your uh, thought process, but about uh, knowing uh, what the other person might be thinking about uh, this particular topic and tackling things that way. So yeah, and sustainable uh, success is something that uh, that is ongoing and uh, uh, it, it uh, definitely comes to uh, the practicality environment, practical environment, I would say. Right. So very rightly said by you, Saksham, completely agree to it that we should set realistic goals. Uh, setting smart goals is definitely important, but then being on the realistic side of it is also very important so that those goals are attainable. So uh, again, moving on to Chanda exactly. on this. Uh, Chanda, how to build self-leadership? Uh, I'm, I completely agree with Saksham that uh, uh, you ha should have, uh, you know, smart goal, uh, you should have smart but realistic goals. But from my point of view, because we deal a lot number of students, uh, in my university, we have around 8000 students at one time. Okay, so we deal with a large number of students from my experience, I have what one thing which I have found really, really helpful, especially in young generation in uh, developing self leadership is that how you inculcate habits in you. That's um, level of self discipline, which you bring to yourself. But you know what we see as Saksha was also saying that most of the people are pumped up and they are failed to see that what uh, obstacles problems. Uh, will come uh, on the way and uh, when we ask our students also that uh, you should uh, develop these kind of habits so most of the time what happens that they succumb in between only because our brain is not trained to take that kind of discipline especially in this young generation if you go through the search then you will find out that the attention span is hardly 15 seconds not more than that Okay, so in that scenario, what I suggest to our students and uh, to everybody that developing good habits, 
developing powerful habits is can be a game changer because we as humans are the products of what we do on daily basis consistency and perseverance these are the two very very important factors because once we are into the habit of doing things rightly doing things the way they should be done then it becomes easy to pour ourselves with the knowledge skill everything so from my point of view if uh, anybody anyone who is looking to develop uh, a self leadership to master their own destiny they should start with self discipline and in the habits which they are developing in themselves uh, uh, if uh, there is a question that what is a good habit basically then i think from my point of view there are three points firstly we should have the knowledge what we want to do and why do we want to do this okay then second thing is a skill that how should i do it if i want to wake up at 5 am every day why i want to do this and i should know that if i want to wake up uh, early in the morning then i should sleep a, a little early in the night and then desire or motivation that do i really want to do this once we start inculcating this kind of powerful habits into ourselves then our personality starts taking shape because then we get confidence once you know that yes i can run every day for uh, maybe 3 kilometers 4 kilometers then you will not be worried about that what calories i am in taking same way at your workplace or in your personal life if you take you want to take the command of your life in your hands then you have to develop that kind of confidence and for that confidence knowledge and skills are very very important if we have the particular knowledge if we acquire the skills undoubtedly we will be having the confidence to present ourselves in a very uh, wonderful way and of course to impress others and also to inspire them that yes i have changed myself you can also change uh, yourself here i would like to quote uh, an uh, incident uh, which happened uh, around 2 years back i had a student mansi and she was very weak in mathematics and she was a student of uh, computer science and she was sick worried uh, when she joined in first year that uh, what will happen to me i'll not get any job so i said to her that okay mansi let's do one thing after the classes uh, you will sit for 45 minutes only and you will do mathematics of 6 7 8 standard books once you finish these books then we will go ahead and she was uh, is consistent she did it for every day no matter it's difficult and uh, at times there was problems but she continued to do this and i'm very proud and happy to say that today she is a proud employee of emphasis this is the power of perseverance so if we want to bring self leadership then we need to understand that it can come only when we discipline ourselves and inculcate good habits in ourselves so this is my take that uh, for, especially for young generation that if you are working if you want to take uh, you want to evolve yourself as a leader gain knowledge gain skills and have that kind of motivation that yes this is my life nobody else is going to live this for me this is what i want to say right so um, again very rightly uh, said by you chanda where i would like to add jo anushasan karega wahi shasan karega so <laughs> that's the crux of this all so uh, let's move on to kapil kapil your take on this how to build self leadership yeah uh, definitely you know all my fellow uh, you know uh, people here they have pointed out some uh, very major points especially for uh, the younger generation uh, some of uh, you know them might feel like that yes you know the, uh, they always uh, need a helping hand from others and they say that you know i have i am from uh, uh, again university uh, admissions and marketing and branding background so i used to visit uh, you know hundreds of schools i have visited in my life lifetime in past couple of years so uh, but uh, there was a common uh, you know Uh, statement which used to come from even from college kids and uh, the school kids that you know we and it's the same you know when i was in class 12th and still after you know almost 17 18 years it's still the same that we were not guided everybody is still saying the same statement though we are in now, now in you know 2021 and i uh, you know i'm i'm surprised that uh, even the parents 
and even the students the same uh, you know same statement is coming that if i was guided well i i could have been a better person today or maybe a better student today or maybe a better professional today but then you, you have to understand that you know people uh, uh, like maybe your parents or your uh, you know um, your uh, allies at your workplace or your your peers your friends definitely yes you know their decisions they affect your life and where when it comes to self leadership part we actually realize that once we are in our maybe in our late 20s or in 30s when you enter in the that phase of your life where you become a manager and you know you are responsible for a team and people management and then you look back into your life that okay fine you know i actually you know never needed anybody's help all i did on my own but then yes you know you have to be very very you know inward looking person to be a, a leader in yourself that first know your strength and weaknesses and do a sort analysis of yourself which is like just on the yes like in mbas and books it is very much there but nobody actually does it so you once you are aware that yes you know like uh, saksham uh, gave an example of uh, of uh, one of the person in, in his uh, company that you know anybody who is joining the company for the first time it's very pumped up and he thinks that yes you know i can do everything you know but then again maybe he he could be a good seller in his last company but the situations and um, you know uh, the things are very different in every company so you cannot replicate the same model everywhere same goes in your personal life that you cannot be anyone else you are what you are and you have your you have your limits so once you know your limits and like i have to quote the uh, uh, chanda ma'am's uh, statement that yes once you know your limits then you know your strength as well that yes like this i can can't do but yes this i can do and whatever you can do you should work on that more instead of just you know sulking down that you okay fine i can't do this i can't do that whatever you can do maybe one out one out of 100 just keep that one and be do it better than others so somewhere down the line yes yeah, somebody is you know will be there to uh, you know see that diamond in you that okay fine you're not good at 99 things but you're good at one thing and that's the one thing we needed and i think that's that's where you start building up as a leader yeah that's it thank you right so very rightly said by you kapil and adding to what you just said uh, there's a there's a whole world out there telling you uh, you cannot do this you cannot do that but then the it's you and only you probably who's to figure out what you are good at maybe those 99 things are already known to you you have to find that one thing and start your self leadership journey so uh, let's move on to sukvinder sukvinder your take on this Okay, ma'am. So I think uh, when Kapil was mentioning about uh, if you're good at something, maybe it's a one thing you should really excel at it. So it reminds me of a very interesting uh, quote by Martin Luther King. So he said that even if you are a sweeper, you should uh, sweep a street like that. Uh, people should stand up and say that they lived a sweeper who used to sweep up fabulously. So it doesn't matter what you are doing. So whatever you are doing, you need to do it to your best. Uh, you should do it like no one else can do. You should have that commitment. and what uh, uh, chandra also said that it's all about perseverance right uh, so what happens is uh, i'll couple will agree with me in b2b sales it's a, low, a conversion ratio is very very low so when a new team member joins so he tell me that i have reached out to 20 people i am not able to convert a sale so i always tell them see what happens in a b2b sales is typically you reach to 100 people 10 or 15 will revert to you out of that maybe you will able to generate a pipeline of two or three cases only so that's a perseverance you need to have you can't be bogged down with the fact that okay i reached out to 100 people people are not even reverting to me so it's a life of a sales person and i uh, nothing taking away from someone else that's a thing i makes the sales person really very uh, of a thick skin in any organization right so you face so much of rejections you have to be shameless you need to follow up with the client and you also have to see that you don't pester them so i think that's a thing you need to have that perseverance and also about building those habits so rightly mentioned by saksham and chanda also you need to build those habits uh, i can uh, say that i read a book by james clear uh, atomic habits a very good book on how you can really uh, build a good habits so it teaches you how in 21 days you can build habit maybe getting up at 6 in the morning i think the best thing which anyone can do is waking up early in the morning don't feel it's a saturday or sunday today i can uh, wake up at 9 or 10 make it a habit every day if you get up on a time you really see that you have lot many things you can do in your life so it's all about 
building those uh, characteristics in you and it will not come over a day it will take time it will take years it will take months so but you need to have that uh, commitment within you and the third thing is uh, which saksham was mentioning that having that uh, empathy for other to understand what's going on others mind so what happened was when we uh, started our mb program so in the very first trimester we had a subject on psychology a very boring subject i would say uh, but uh, fortunately we had a very good professor he started with a very interesting experiment a tappers and listener that's the name of an experiment so uh, it's a very good case study also done i think in uh, early 19th uh, Century or something like that. So he divided class into two groups of uh, fifty fifty students each. So he said that I'll give you a tunes, a very famous jingles, maybe like a a Christmas jingle, Happy Birthday jingle, or maybe a a fan ad, anything which is very famous. You have to tap it, and you have to tell me the probability what a listener will be able to guess it. So all the people who were in the tappers team, uh, they said that it would be fifty percent uh, chances that uh, listener would be able to guess what I'm tapping on. and uh, what actually happened was it was less than 2% so what happens is when we do something when we are tapping that is running in our head so we know that what we are tapping on you can do it right now also maybe you tap something you would say that a person sitting in front of me would be able to guess what i'm tapping on but actually listeners don't know what is going in your head so you need to have that empathy for other if you are asking someone to do something maybe you are asking your team and you need certain report by tomorrow eod and then you come to know that he or she has not done it why because you are not able to give her a proper download you feel that she knows what needs to be done so you need to have that empathy for your team you need to have empathy for the people around you they can't know what is going in your head so if they are not able to do it it's not them to be blamed it's you to be blamed you are not able to explain it to them so you need to have that uh, empathy for your team member or the people around you so i think i would just summarize what section said and chandan and kapil said so i picked up one one point each from them right and uh, so quinder again very tightly said by you that uh, uh, you need to have that empathy and a lot of times leaders forget this thing so that is that is kind of a reiteration for a lot of leaders who are, who must be listening to this webinar watching this so um now again moving on to the next very important point we've been talking about uh, for for last 40 minutes or so we've been talking about self leadership now let's let's touch upon what is uh, the importance of self leadership and why is self leadership important so uh, moving on to this this is a question to everybody of you um, i'll i'll start on this with chanda why is self leadership important see uh, from my point of view when you do not believe in self leadership what happens uh, most of the people as einstein said once that uh, everybody is a born genius but if you are going to judge a fish from its capacity of flying so it will live whole life uh, believing that it's stupid right so this happens with most of the people we believe what our society perceives what our parents and uh, people around us says about us and until unless you take your uh, you know you take your life in your hands you believe in self leadership you take your own take then you know you will be living a life which is not yours as simple as that because then you will be a living a life which has been designed by someone else according to his own or her own choices and tastes it will not be your life when i conduct a very interesting activity in my classrooms at times uh, which we call hidden self and blind spots okay so blind spots students take feedback from each other and from teachers from parents or maybe from relatives also and then they come up that people think this about us and i was surprised that okay those are thinking about the, the way this i am then i always say this that see you can never change the perception of others how they are thinking about you but you can change it only when you change this perception about yourself when you believe this what i am and i am going to achieve this and this happens uh, from my point of view in fact uh, for especially for people like us who are professionals most of the time as saksham was also saying that we regret the choices which we made in the past but i always suggest everyone because i have been into counseling since long that please do not be so harsh on yourself don't judge your present with the choices which you made maybe 5 years back you were not that smart at the time now 5 years of experience and knowledge has been added so you cannot be judgmental on present day's skill about the decision which you have taken 5 or 10 years back 
you should not be actually so importance of self leadership is that okay that was the time then this was my level of knowledge experience situation i have taken a decision i have lived that decision and now i have moved on now i am more intelligent or maybe i know much more i have more experience and now i whatever decision i will be taking this is how my life is going to take shape in future so you can never do anything about the past no matter how many times you go with to it it will remain same okay so from my point of view self leadership is very important because most of the people start living in regret maybe uh, you have made a wrong decision or maybe not so good decision in the past and our life is stuck somewhere so i always suggest take the responsibility whatever is gone is gone think now take a decision and start living it this is because in my own life i have done i am a fashion graduate from iift but and i spent good 6 years in fashion but one fine day i realized no this is not my cup of tea i can't do it for the rest of my life okay and uh, then i thought okay i'll be switching and i switched to training and development and i found my peace in technology so i don't blame myself okay i had spent so much amount of money and time that gone is gone so what i suggest why self leadership is important because then you can take up your life the way it comes to you and the way you want to live it don't dwell on the decisions which you have taken they may be right may not be so right move on take the reins in your hand look at yourself and you know as a person also as a human also we evolve nobody can be the same person as we were maybe 5 10 or 15 years back our aspirations interests choices change so until unless we take this in our hands we will not be able to live at the fullest so this is how why i think the self leadership is very very important and in corporate scenario in work scenario also until unless you learn to think win win people have faith in you and people can have faith in you only once when you have faith in yourself if you if you do not trust your decisions yourself how would anybody would else right so from my point of view self leadership is very important because this life is given once and uh, when we die uh, i believe we should not have any regrets so and that can only happen when we do what we actually want to do and we don't dwell on the decisions which were taken earlier and now they are not so useful or we find out that because i have seen people doing this that okay 10 years back i did this and i'm stuck due to this nobody asked you to stuck on that move on so that is the importance of self leadership from my point of view right so uh, chanda uh, moving on in life is very important definitely we all take uh, wrong decisions bad decisions at some point of the time but then uh, taking responsibilities for them and moving on in life is what makes it count so uh, moving on to kapil kapil your take on this why is self leadership so important yeah i would like to you know, again uh... Yeah, like you might feel like that I'm uh, again uh, pushing it through in terms of sales or in terms of uh, business orientation. But then uh, that's what you know. This is my DNA. So I always, you know, my all the conversations they end up uh, going towards that direction. So two things I would like to uh, you know mention here that uh, effective leadership starts with uh, self leadership. Right. So if you're if you're not disciplined in yourself and if you don't know, it's not about knowing the work. so it's not necessary that let's say you know i any manager or any senior manager have to be a very good at what his front line is doing but then managing people and being a leader that's very important so two points i would like to uh, mention that it is a it is a key actually like if it, you know being self dependent and self uh, anybody anybody who's a self leader can build up effective teams and if when you are managing a group of individuals who further are managing more people down line so what happens is the always the people in the down line they always look upon to you so no matter if you are taking right decisions or wrong decisions they will try to replicate you and this i have seen you know practically happening that you know you are taking a meeting with your senior managers or you know unit heads and the moment you know you are out of the room they'll call in their teams and they try to replicate you but that that yeah so this is you know it's a human nature so you become like your managers that's eventually happens 
so and secondly uh, that as a as a part of top management you know you have to take care of you know relationship management amongst your employees which is sometimes one to one and which is sometimes one to many so let's say if you're dealing right like, like you know there are three four people downline to me then when i'm dealing with the unit heads or senior managers so then it's a one to one relationship between me as a leader and them then furthermore they as a leader they have one to many relationship because they are you know catering to a, a big team so and handling teams is more complex than handling individuals so i am responsible for getting business from six or seven guys then again they are responsible for getting business from 80 or 90 people right so when when the leader has a control over his thoughts and actions same is uh, you know same is mirrored by your downline so that's why uh, i'll uh, sum up is that self leadership is very very important so once you, once you are very thorough and uh, you are sorted in yourself as a leader definitely it replicates so that's why it is very important right so uh, again moving on to uh, uh, sukhvinder sukhvinder why it is important according to you okay so rana um, i was listening to what chandra mentioned and i think uh, a very interesting uh, perspective that you should always be forward looking you shouldn't uh, back down with the thing you have done in the past and uh, you regret uh, about doing those things uh, about those decisions so i'll share a example of one of our ex employee uh, so dnb globally we are around 190 year old organization so in india we are around 25 years now so we also have a fortune of having four past us president working for dnb so i'll share a story of one of those president mr lincoln so uh, lincoln was 16th uh, president of the united states and uh, one of the most successful president uh, till date so uh, if you look at his story uh, look at his journey uh, so his past has been a testament to utter failure uh, what an individual could be so uh, he was not a very bright student in the school uh, he tried to enter a law college he failed then he tried to start a business uh, borrowed some money from friends and uh, relatives but he went bankrupt it didn't uh, stop him from uh, looking forward then he started looking for a job uh, he worked in some organizations he got fired and uh, not from dnb and then uh, he ventured into politics he fought eight elections lost them and then finally he became the president of united states so you can look at the story from him you can take a lot of inspiration from him uh, that you should never be disappointed with the uh, what decisions you are doing or uh, what the failures you see in your life you should always look forward so there are very two uh, interesting quotes uh, he have and uh, that is somewhere quoted on the walls of dnb also uh, most of the time one is i am a slow walker but i never walk backwards so it summarizes very uh, beautifully what uh, chanda was mentioning that maybe you uh, don't compare yourself with a colleague who has gone much ahead in your life uh, at one point of a time so ultimately it's a zero sum game right so if you are continuously moving forward you are trying to improve yourself every day you're trying to learn you will catch up with them so it's a zero sum uh, game in the life and the second thing which he mentioned was whatever you are be a good one so again the example of sitra which we just discussed so whatever you are doing try try to be your best in that try to excel in that always try to learn be motivated take inspirations from the people around you so i think this is what i would like to cover on this point yeah wow it almost it almost gave me goosebumps when you said that i'm a slow walker but then i never move backwards so yes uh looking ahead in life is very important and it is very important to realize that you are the only you so do not compare your journey with anyone else and uh, today's failure doesn't guarantee tomorrow's failure as well it doesn't matter if you fail today it doesn't matter if you're not doing well today that you're not going to do well tomorrow it's it's your perseverance that's going to take you forward so uh, moving on to saksham saksham why is it important yes absolutely there's a uh, there's a point that uh, i can go on uh, like i can keep speaking but i would like to conclude uh, uh, to the inputs that has been given by my fellow panelists like chanda uh, kapil and sukhvinder so uh, see the point is till the time uh, i won't be pumped up or if i won't be charged enough uh, then how exactly i'll be charging up my team or my fellow members so this is what self leadership is all about you have to be self disciplined you have to be self motivated you have to be uh, like uh, 
self starter and if you are following if you are practicing self leadership in a longer duration or uh, continuously then absolutely you will certainly be uh, going uphill and not down uh, downhill uh, as i mentioned in uh, in my last interaction with you so yeah to to move forward uphill and not downhill we certainly need to practice self leadership and that's the importance right so uh, very rightly said by you saksham so uh, moving on to the next question uh, we'll take this question with two of you uh, mastering others is strength mastering yourself is true power it is said so what are the most common skills to master self leadership i'll start with supinder on this okay so now uh, i would say it's not two it's three it's about being doing a phd So by PhD I mean passion, hunger, and discipline. So right, uh, so you need to really have that passion uh, if you want to uh, excel at something. And I think uh, till now, whatever examples we discussed, whatever Saksham discussed, Kapil and Chanda discussed, everyone talked about having that passion, right? And the passion is contagious. Uh, in a team, if you are really passionate, uh, passionate about that common goal, if you really want to achieve it, you will see that people around you will also contribute towards it. If you don't have that passion with between um, uh, in your if you don't have that inspiration if you really don't want to do it you will see that others are also not very motivated to get towards it so you really need to have passion for that so like if you and the third, second one is hunger uh, so rightly said if you want to win it you really want to win it right so uh, steve jobs used to say that stay hungry stay foolish so you really need to have that hunger always you have to have some uh, milestones for you you want to achieve it uh, a very interesting example so when uh, there was an astronaut who came back from moon uh, in nasa so after coming back they uh, went into a bit of de- uh, depression so because there was nothing much left for them to achieve now what else you can do after going to the moon right so they needed certain counseling they needed certain guidance in the life so it's not just about it there could be other goals you need to uh, put uh, for yourself that will inspire you to move forward and the third thing is discipline so discipline i think uh, is something uh, which is the most important thing Uh, I, I myself is a very strong believer of the fact that the process beats talent, right? If you have a process set in a place, if you are really disciplined about you, it doesn't matter that you have an inherent talent for that. So uh, once that Michael Phelps, uh, I think everyone in our generation knows about him, uh, the brilliant swimmer having won uh, won nine gold medals in one Olympic. So someone asked him, "What keeps you uh, doing so good in your life?" So he mentioned that I practice when I feel like, and I also practice when I don't feel like. So you really need to have that discipline in your life. You shouldn't be uh, doing it when you enjoy doing it. Uh, you should set up a goal for yourself. So you should always be motivated to do it. So I think these are the three things: passion, uh, hunger, and discipline, which can master you uh, for a self leadership. Right. Completely agree to what you said, Sukhvinder. Uh, passion, practice, hunger—it's all important. Uh, so, same question to you, Saksham. What are the most important skills to master self-leadership? Uh, I'm see. There are multiple factors that uh, uh, that combines uh, to build up self master uh, self uh, leadership. Uh, leadership. leadership itself concludes to self leadership itself concludes to leading uh, something it can be a idea an idea it can be uh, a team it can be anything so uh, the first thing is whenever you are leading you have to take critics in the right manner you cannot uh, get uh, offended when when someone is uh, criticizing you because uh, everyone is having their uh, positive and negative so we need to understand uh, if someone is criticizing us that is for our good we can we can take it in uh, right manner we can take it in wrong manner if we'll be taking it in the right manner i'm sure we'll be moving forward we'll be moving uphill and not downhill uh, the other uh, pointer is adding value to others as i uh, mentioned earlier as well if we'll be adding value to others i'm pretty sure that uh, it is certainly going to be uh, an add on to uh, your practice uh, practice for self uh, leadership the third point is understanding things as per others uh, perspective or others uh, understanding now uh, i i brought up this point earlier as well what i meant is uh, let's say uh you are uh, you are handling a team or maybe you are handling a student um, it can be anything you are handling two ideas 
वन आइडिया इज बींग एग्रेसिव वाई द अदर आइडिया इज वेरी मच काम और टू पीपल यू आर टॉकिंग टू टू पीपल एंड यू हैव द सेम सब्जेक्ट टू टॉक अबाउट विद टू पीपल एंड यू आर टॉकिंग टू डेम वन ऑन वन वाइल यू आर टॉकिंग टू पर्सन वन ही इज रिएक्टिंग और शी इज रिएक्टिंग क्वाइट कूल काम वेर एज द अदर पर्सन इज रिएक्टिंग क्वाइट arrogantly so you need to revise your actions accordingly you need to revise your uh, understanding accordingly so that uh, the person uh, i mean it should not affect your outcome it should not affect what uh, where you are going because that is the first point of self leadership you need to understand what uh, who you are what you want and how you want why you want so yeah that that's all that i would like to conclude you, uh, the things are uh, adding value to others uh, responding appropriately to the critics and understanding things as per others uh, understanding also there is one more important thing is emotional question uh, like uh, every one of us is having an emotional question with us uh, we we very frequently hear about uh, things like emotional question should not be there in business emotional question should not be there in leadership i believe it's uh, it has to be rephrased emotional question has to be there but uh, we need to uh, place it in the right uh, uh, right direction we need to uh, i mean if we are keeping emotions above our decisions that is absolutely wrong but if we are taking decisions without considering the emotions that can also lead us to to the negative direction so we need to make a balance between emotions between uh, decisions uh, all the factors has to be uh, combined thoroughly yeah right so uh, very rightly said that all the factors have to be combined very thoroughly so uh, moving on to the next point it is said that success is directly proportional to self leadership so uh, let's start with kapil on this kapil what do you have to say on this what's your take yeah it, it's a very right statement um, which is mentioned in the uh, question itself that you know because what i believe is your size of your success depends upon how good you are at leading yourself right i, I this reminds me of uh, uh, you know uh, a common phrase i used to get from students um, especially their class 12 and 11 students that they want to get into nda they want to get into army or uh, air forces right and when I, i used to ask them okay fine you know uh, what you are what actually you are doing to achieve that and to clear that exam that okay then they they don't have any answer that yes okay first i am concentrating on my Uh, class 12th boards and then i'll uh, yes that's my dream and i i'll fill up a form and i'll give the paper but then you know they they don't know that yes you know there is a physical exam as well there is a a sprint you have to do just not the written part of it so but they have never you know uh, thought of training themselves physically to pass that exam so the chances of that person of that student clearing nda are 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 a negative definitely it, it's not going to happen right in just in 15 days you, you just can't do it so yes you know you you or your, your success in anything is depends upon your self disciplined life and your self leadership that are you motivated yourself to reach that goal or not because um, uh, let's say you know any successful business or careers you know there are high chances that if you are not uh, if your leader is is not that great so th- that you know imbibes through your those values of the leaders and the actions of the leaders they are imbibed by the teams downline and then the whole you know the the system shakes up and it is we, we all have I might have seen in our lives in your past careers that uh, sometime it happens that some some person joins a senior management suddenly out of the blue and he starts you know uh, a kind of a Uh, uh, changes from the day one that he just wants to change everything in his own style, but and thinking that yes, you know uh, that will create impression on uh, the promoters, but that's that's never happens. So your success definitely will be you know drive on always and always if if you are you know sorted in your mind and uh, self leading attitude should should be there. Because uh, and uh, uh, one more thing I would like to add here as uh, Saksham rightly said and. Uh, pointed out about the eq part that being uh, you know as a leader you have to be very strong at like you know emotionally 
and you cannot be rational in your decisions based on your emotions and you should know your emotional triggers you should know your emotional makeup uh, as i rightly mentioned that you know you are different you you are as, as a head or a manager you are different with every person in your office right you just cannot be same you cannot have the same emotions and same uh, things in front of your leaders but then on the same time whatever you are as a person no matter you are not talking to that person maybe in a month's time but then yes your uh, you know uh, silently people observe you as a senior and they they try to replicate you so they want to be like you but then yes like once you are uh, you know uh, self disciplined and you're a leader in yourself definitely you know pe- people should be knowing that if you want to be a successful person like my senior or my boss i have to do the things what he has done and sacrifice in his life so yes you have to be self disciplined you have to be a leader in yourself whatever stage you are at maybe student or or any any other stage of your life and then success will come so yes that is important right so uh, moving forward with the same question to you chanda uh, what is your take on the fact that success is directly proportional to self leadership uh my take is basically uh mixed up of all the things which my uh, fellow part uh, panelist has shared but uh, firstly i would like to tell one thing because i will not go in the repetition uh, that how do we define success is also very important because this pandemic thing has taught us this very clearly that we may have different priorities but when we start running once and you know there something realizes us that are we successful are we happy so from my take that when you are into self leadership and you understand you start understanding your own success parameters how do you define your success then obviously you will be doing all the actions you will be taking choices making choices which will take you towards that success which is defined by you not by others uh, one there are two three things which are very important from my point of view because when it comes to self leadership i am completely agree with saksham and sukhvinder and kapil that in especially nowadays emotional stigma is a very big problem people do not accept it and most of the time we are haunted by our own you know inner thoughts uh, emotions whatever going in uh, our brain and in our culture especially in indian culture we have this tendency to hide it to tell our kids no this is wrong yes and nahi bolte hain apne bhai se nahi aise karna hai behan ke sath ye tera dost and so on right so from my point of view your success will be certainly proportional to your self leadership once you start understanding your hidden you know we all have certain devils certain dark sides inside us but what we do we try to hide it we try to ignore it and what happens when we grow up sometime these things come up like a burst so why what i suggest to everybody understand yourself understand your demons and make a choice to tame them then your self leadership will certainly be proportionate to that success which you have defined for yourself other than this thing integrity and trust this i believe is a very very strong factor which makes a person true leader because when we start thinking that there should be a win win position there should not be win lose position when we start thinking about that yes there should be win win position for everyone then people respect you and then you will be able to make successful meaningful for everyone around you so your success will be certainly proportional to your self leadership when you will be understanding yourself uh, emotional intelligence uh, i take few i have taken in fact few workshops uh, recently I, i don't know whether you people have heard dy patel is a very famous engineering college of, uh, of our country i have taken recently a workshop on emotional intelligence with the students of mechanical engineer especially mechanical is a branch where you know male female ratio is slightly not slightly in fact very really screwed Uh, in fa- uh, favor of boys so uh, when we were talking there so i had lots of such kind of questions so i always said to the, my students also that emotional intelligence is something which can you know change the whole game for you when you know what are my emotions how do i control them and where do i need to resolve them 
we most of the time we do not teach ourselves our uh, people around us our students our, even our kids that how to resolve those emotion i have a sense of jealous with my coworker i ignore that and sometimes it comes up like a burst okay how do i we resolve these things so from my point of view a good leader should understand these things and help your people around you to resolve the issues rather than ignoring or suppressing them possibly it will take much better success for everyone and there will be a win win situation because as humans i believe everybody should grow everybody should rise so this is my take uh, that uh, yes your self leadership and success will go in hand in hand but once you understand yourself and you are emotionally intelligent right uh, uh, wonderfully wonderfully said by you chanda so uh, the next question that i have for the panel uh, goes out to everybody uh, what is the role of mentoring coaching and practice in self leadership let's start with saksham on this i think it's important uh, to have mentoring sessions to have uh, this this kind of sessions but at the same time if we are not self starter uh, ourselves then uh, those sessions will go in vain uh, i believe uh, the first thing that we need to understand is we have to be self starter we need to believe in ourselves in our ideas in our things uh, no matter if anyone else is believing uh, in ourselves or not that is the whole soul crux of self leadership that you have to keep on going you do not have to stop in between and if um, i mean uh, uh, as an individual if i think uh, okay i'll be a self mastered leader one day but for that i need certain uh, mentoring sessions absolutely you can you can have mentoring sessions you can uh, maybe you can shell out certain money if you uh, you can afford that maybe you can go to you youtube and learn about it maybe you can now there are multiple resources out there but the ultimate thing is it's not about just thinking and uh, uh, collecting information from outside but it has to be start from within how uh, what exactly do you want to do and uh, you need to have your own plan the plan won't be uh, full proof on day 1 but it will be uh, getting better and better and better uh, as we'll be proceeding ahead uh, as we were uh, discussing the fact that uh, su- uh, success and uh, this uh, leadership self leadership these are not time bound tasks but this is an ongoing journey so absolutely mentoring sessions can be for a limited time uh, any any kind of classes can be for a limited time but this is something that uh, we have to practice forever right saksham so any classes they cannot go for ever it is something that has to be practiced by one own self uh, exactly. so yes taking taking forward the same question to kapil uh, kapil what's the role of uh, mentoring coaching and practice in self leadership according to you okay uh, sure uh, i um, would be picking up uh, all the three things one by one so if i talk about mentoring so uh, what uh, but i have seen because i have worked with the, Uh, you know uh, college students and school students a lot so and what i could i could make out from here is that uh, t- uh, you know uh, teaching your employees and finding the skill deficit in the employees that's where your mentoring helps and that as sakshim rightly said you know you can uh, keep on fixing the skills deficit every time so mentoring is a uh, it's is a time bound uh, you know uh, activity which you do especially with the uh, new joinees and people who are just you know just uh, you know have spent a, a little time in your uh, company so it's more of a functional training where you are just fixing the fixing up the patches right uh, when it comes to counseling uh, we might you know sometimes it happens that uh, we, you know because not everybody uh, is a you know a trained counselor but then what we think of counseling is uh, just about you know talking and find, finding out you know faults um with the person and doing one to one sessions but, but my approach is a bit different here it should be more of a you know inside out approach where you should be asking a lot of questions when it comes to counseling right and uh, that actually helps to you know uh, create an inspiration and it, it you know instigates an inspiration in a person and also it it uh, brings out the emotional burst 
and maybe your employer whatever you know the thoughts are going on in the mind so that that is very important as a leader so counseling is important mentoring is important practice is something uh, um, i i say it in the way that it's like correcting someone in the future tense right that, that's the right part because they you know uh, there is a saying in hindi like you know karat karat abhyas ke jadh mat ho sujan so they the english it say we say it as practice makes you perfect but then you know perfection is cannot be attained with which practically what you have seen in our lives as, as now in our 30s we have realized they you know nobody can be perfect but then if you this is slightly changed within the years that what i feel like is practice makes you do less mistakes and the less mistakes means that that means you are improving right so uh, all these mentoring coaching and practice collectively if you talk about they actually improve the commitment in a person so yes you know i've been taken care that that's mentoring i've been helped that coaching i am doing fine i'm doing great i'm learning that's practice so all together there actually increases the level of commitment in an individual and in the end who will not love a committed employee right, right. so that that's why mentoring coaching and practice it's it should be ongoing session uh, like throughout but yeah it should be time bound but very important and uh, a leader should be you know uh, keeping eye on these three things yeah thanks that's that, that's all yeah yeah and and being committed in life no matter where you are if beat in your personal life beat in your professional life being committed is very important it's a very important virtue that i believe uh, so sukhvinder your take on this look at that so right um, so like a uh, couple mentioned it's all about uh, improving yourself continuously right uh, looking uh, in uh, at the areas where you can improve so to share one example so this is about uh, uh when the uh, coaches started using this video recording to uh, analyze the game and then coach their teams so this was related to something uh, regarding one of the state soccer team so what happened was uh, i think it was of uh, late 80s uh, this incident of it's a very uh, let's say relevant today also you will see across everywhere it happens so they were analyzing a match after the uh, game uh, they lost it and uh, they were analyzing one of the uh, forward player uh, approach towards the game so one of the very great player uh, he dribbled across he uh, maneuvered there is player and he reached towards the goal but finally he got uh, engaged by one of the defendant and he lost the ball so then the coach said see uh, there was a lot of gaps he could have passed it but he didn't do it so then that that guy said that sir upar se sirf gap hi dikhte hain so it happens so when actually you are not involved in the game uh, from outside it looks very uh, you can give an expert comment this could have been done this has been done but it's a person who actually make a uh, decision at that point of a time a uh, very interesting i think most of you have seen that movie uh, hudson river how that uh, pilot had to take a decision within a fraction of seconds and when they were doing the simulation they said that you could have done this you could have done this but it's actually about that uh, decision making he has to take that uh, decision in a split of second so it's all about that so it same goes with a leader right so you may uh, uh, ask your team okay you have done 10 meetings uh this could have been done in this way why didn't you get a positive output out of it so don't always criticize your team so you have to look at a positive side also you have to keep motivating them you have to keep mentoring them so it might happen that uh, in an organization chart there may be a very uh, small gap between a leader and a subordinate but perspectives can be very very different right so you need to have that perspective you have to put yourself in a shoe of your team shoe of your employer shoe of your team uh, people around you so you have to have that empathy so the like the example we discussed of tappers and listener there could be something going going on in your mind you feel that okay this has to be done in this way but unless you don't give a proper download to people around you you don't coach them you don't tell them what is expected out of them how you can expect them to do it in that way right so it's all about having that empathy it's all about uh, being porous uh, the very first example we started with so you should be able to teach them you should not always we and uh, another very important thing which happens a lot in the corporate is insecurity right some leaders are really very insecure of their team their colleagues going ahead of them they try to filter the information coming from the top okay we are not uh, it's above your pay grade but the discussion has happened so you should never have this insecurity in yourself if you don't have that insecurity if you put yourself in their shoes what you did when you were four year back what you expected out of your leader i think then you could be a great mentor and could be a great leader for the people around you yeah right very very beautifully quoted by sukhvinder and last but not the least let's take the same question to chanda uh 
yeah actually i agree with every one of you uh, and i personally believe that mentoring is very important not only professionally but personally also in our lives mentoring coaching uh, you know uh, i i would like to take the example of mr v s kamath who actually was the first ceo of um, icici bank and he has groomed lots many people in his own life and there are lots of corporate people who are doing very very well in the corporate and so i believe that mentoring is something which is very important in the growth of any employee and also in your own growth because when i as i was telling you people i take my own example when i switched from fashion to engineering that was a completely paradigm shift for me because fashion is a very much informal kind of field and more on creative side less on foundations while engineering colleges are more on academics and timings and everything so uh, my first boss he was a very good mentor and i dedicate my success a lot to him because he had faith in me that yes no matter from where you are coming you can do good so i believe that mentoring is very very important for any of the employee because when the boss has faith in you and this reminds me of a very interesting incident also uh, once uh, uh, head of the department of computer science department uh, he uh, sent a, a complaint to my boss that uh, she doesn't uh, reaches in the classes uh, on time and uh, somewhere between she got stuck up then my boss he asked me to come in the cabin and ask that i have got this complaint what happened then i started a little i had a smile and i said that sir actually what happens finally a students they stops me in between of the stairs at times in the corridors and they start asking questions and that is how i get late so then uh, he took he you know gave a very beautiful explanation explanation to the head of the department of computer science he said that she is a good teacher that's why wherever she stands the class starts i still remember the exactly same words and that kind of motivation when somebody has your boss has that kind of faith in you that yes you are doing good that helps employees also to evolve and even today i have a high regard for the person that's why i am mentioning his name on such a platform so from my point of view uh mentoring is very important counseling is very important and yes when you start practicing these things with your employees maybe your students or your colleagues these things you know uh, undoubtedly makes you a leader because then even if you do not hold a position then also you are a leader for the person so uh, uh, my take is on this that yes mentoring and coaching can play a very very important role if you groom your employees properly especially when the people joins from different kind of fields especially nowadays when i was uh, seeing that after this covid thing things has changed a lot people are joining from different sectors into different sectors in fact recently a very good uh, friend of mine he was earlier in paper industry uh, and now in fact paper packing industry and now he has joined agriculture industry because people are welcoming people now companies are welcoming uh, welcoming people from different kind of experiences because they can bring something which existing people are not able to they can bring some new perspective so in such kind of scenario mentoring and counseling can be very important and it can help you to groom a lot right and as leaders it's very important to set right examples because uh, if you set those right examples people will definitely have very high degree of regard for you uh, no matter where they go no matter what they do uh, with this we land up in the last 7 minutes of today's uh, discussion today's session so i'll i'll take uh, uh, closing comments from each one of you uh, so let's start with kapil on this couple your closing comments on mastering the art of self leadership uh, right so, um, this is something you know uh, goes throughout your life right so it's 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 a journey basically it's not that the, okay fine uh, at this age i have attained this that i am a leader in myself and i have done uh, what i have I have to done in my life no it's because you never know you know your your circumstances your situations and uh, the kind of company you're working in will change no matter you know uh, what what do you think of yourself you know but you don't have control at lot of things in your life so certain properties like being very disciplined in, in yourself taking control of your emotions collectively i'm saying and uh, then be very very you know composed and sorted in your mind 
and yes yeah keep, keep on going uh, with the flow as a life takes you uh, wherever but then yes like a leader is is a leader is a leader so if if you have those uh, you know uh, properties and skills in you no matter what industry or where you're working maybe you're a teacher or you you're in you know sports or whatever you are doing once you are a leader it will come out automatically right so very rightly said once you're a leader it's going to come out automatically moving on to saksham saksham your closing comments on this uh we need to be humble we need to keep practicing self discipline we need to keep practicing cons- consistency and we need to make sure that our attitude is always never give up attitude uh when i say never give up attitude that doesn't mean that uh, we need to struggling with the same thing that is bothering us that means that uh, we have our goals we have our initial point we have a bridge that bridge is self leadership so uh, we can always uh, renovate the bridge we can always uh, uh, say extend or uh, uh, shorten the bridge but we need to be on the bridge to to achieve that uh, final goal that's all okay and chanda your closing comments uh, my closing comment will be like uh, these uh, two guy, uh, wonderful guys have said but yes uh, my first thing would be know yourself actually know yourself very well understood what is success for you and uh, of course be disciplined of course be emotionally intelligent and uh, be the master of your own destiny don't be so reluctant fearful that yes anybody else can take the reins of my life in their hands be the owner of your own life that is what i would like to say to everybody the own your life then obviously you will when you will be leading your life your way then you can lead anybody so this is my take that be what you are know yourself very well this is what i am and this is how i want to live my life when you yeah. make those choices don't be so harsh on yourself as everybody was saying that life is a journey you will keep on learning you will keep on making mistakes this is how it is and at the end of the day if we are worn torn and lived it's worthwhile the journey as simple as that so by uh, in the end i would just like to uh, quote a very famous quote from winston churchill never given never given never 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 in nothing great or small large or petty never given except to convictions of honor and good sense thank you Thank you so much, Chanda. That's a wonderful thought indeed. And last but not the least, uh, Sukhvinder, your closing comments on this. Sure, that now very inspirational quote, Chanda. Now, uh, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, again, everyone highlighted. I'll also go with that. It's about humility. Um, it's really very important to be humble all the time. Always remember, someone else is always holding your string. So be humble. Second uh, is about always keep learning. So biggest room available is the room for improvement. Okay, so I believe uh, Sukhvinder has ran into a bad connection. Yeah, so I think yeah. I'm back. Okay, he's back. Yes. The power cut. Yeah, <laughs> you can't help it, right? And this, I was mentioning. So biggest room ever available is the room for improvement. So keep learning. Um, uh, and the th- third thing is, it really doesn't matter where you are. Now, uh, in the organization, in your family, but you can always exhibit a trait of a leadership. Ah, uh, in an organization, a person sitting at a front desk with a smiling face, he can be a leader in a sense. A housekeeping guy could be a leader in a sense. A CEO could be a leader in a sense. So it really doesn't matter that you need to have a title to be a leader, right? So you could be a leader in any sense of your life, being a sports person, being in a uh, people around you, being in a relationship with your family, with your wife, with your friends. So you could be leader everywhere. So yeah, so that would be my closing comment. Wow. So. Uh... keep moving forward live with no regrets know yourself be disciplined stay humble keep learning because the biggest room available is the room from for improvement uh very rightly said by all our speakers very beautifully highlighted by all our panelists today well with this uh, we come to the end of today's session i'd like to thank all the speakers uh, we'd like to thank saksham chanda kapil sukhvinder for joining us today and enlightening us with your wonderful thoughts 
thank you thank you to all and thank so you much, dana uh, for inviting and uh, wish you all the best uh, everybody please rise high stay safe and thank you so much thank you well, thank you so much yeah. i'd also like to thank our viewers for tuning in today so i request all of you to keep following us for more such webinars on some topics of current relevance and do not forget to connect with us on our social media handles facebook linkedin twitter instagram and uh, we will be back in yet another chapter of dd talks very shortly so uh, stay tuned and thank you so much for joining us today to each and every one this is your host mc dharna signing off for the day thank you